I've spent the last month poring over almost every single human study on NMN. That means 13 studies. I've also been spending time listening to a bunch of podcasts and videos of people like Dr. David Sinclair touting the amazing benefits of NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. And don't ask me to repeat that 10 times fast. Anyway, after all that, I really think everyone needs to reconsider how we think about NMN. Is it really the holy grail of health and longevity, or are we once again falling for marketing hype? In this video, I will show you the data across all the human studies to date so that you can make up your own mind. So let's begin. Like I mentioned from the top, NMN supplementation has taken the world by storm, spearheaded primarily by Dr. David Sinclair, a longevity researcher who talked about it years ago based on largely animal studies. These animal studies did show tremendous positive effects of NMN. For example, researchers show reduced blood sugar with NMN supplementation, where the red bar is a high dose of NMN supplementation. Or a possible increase in the number of mitochondrial proteins, alluding to improved mitochondrial health and efficiency. The positive results extend far beyond these two examples, however, but since we're interested in humans, I'll spare you the animal data. NMN is thought to work by increasing the availability of a molecule that is critical for over 100 different key enzymatic reactions in our cells. That molecule is nicotinamide dinucleotide, or NAD. It's because of its effects in DNA repair, metabolism, gene expression, that we consider it a powerful, all-encompassing anti-aging molecule. And since as we age, our NAD levels drop, it makes sense to supplement with the precursor molecule, NMN, to boost NAD levels. Now, I would normally go into the mechanisms a lot more heavily, but we have a lot of data to get to. So this will have to do for now, and I'll cover more on mechanisms in the future. So the first question is, does NMN actually increase NAD levels? Because if NMN doesn't even do that, we might as well just call it quits now. Fortunately, many studies have checked exactly that and shown increases in blood NAD levels as seen here. You can see that at time zero, that's baseline, both groups, NMN and placebo, experience equivalent NAD levels. However, as NMN is actually consumed over time, NAD levels only increase in the NMN supplementing group. The week 16 is a washout measure, so meaning the NMN group stopped consuming NMN and that's why it reduces back. Okay, so we have proof that NMN supplementation raises blood NAD levels, and we can see that the NMN supplementation lasts for months. Both are criteria that need to be met to experience benefit. So let's look at those amazing results that we're about to uncover. I mean, what are you going to do with your many years of age reversal? Climb a mountain, uh, go paragliding, rejoin first grade, reincarnate the dead. <laughs> well, if you were to ask these researchers, you'll find yourself massively disappointed because all of these studies found absolutely no effect of NMN supplementation. Just as one example, let me show you some of the data. The orange line is the NMN group and the blue line is the placebo group. If you see there's an asterisk that's above a time of supplementation, then that means there's a difference between the two at that time. So fasting blood sugar, nothing. HbA1c, nothing. Insulin resistance, nothing. Triglycerides, HDL, LDL, you know the drill, nothing. But as your sharp eye has noticed, total cholesterol did change. It increased in the NMN condition, but let's not blame NMN for that. It happened after they stopped supplementing and most likely the effect was actually driven by a drop in the placebo condition. So I wouldn't worry about this. Okay, so that's one example, but one drawback of that study, although it did include men and women, is that the dose is arguably too low because they use 250 milligrams a day. Still, I would like to point out that it did show an increase in NAD from NMN supplementation before, and that data came from this very study. So clearly NMN at 250 milligrams does increase NAD levels. So yeah, can't really have cognitive dissonance here. Either way, 
Let's say the critique is that 250 milligrams is entirely too little. Well, then we can lean on this study wherein the researchers used five times the amount, well over a gram, and here's that data. Now, I realize that that's a bunch of numbers, and if you want to look at it more closely, you're welcome to pause the video or click the reference that I have provided, or wait for my full study analysis of all 13 studies to release, but let me save you some trouble and your eyesight. There's zero effect across all measures, including LP little a, uric acid, insulin resistance, cholesterol, and much more. Okay, but both of these studies were in people who are in their 30s and 40s, so maybe there's an age and health factor that we're missing. If we open up another study and I plaster the data on the screen again for you, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. There are zero effects, and this study was performed in people in their 80s, and even beyond that, they had diabetes, and they supplemented with NMN for six months. If you're an NMN believer, you must be as sweating a bit under the collar, and if you sell NMN, you must be scrambling to concoct some reason why your super advanced formulation is just so much better than what these studies used. But any way you slice it, we know NMN increases NAD levels. And across these studies and others, there's no effect. Okay, but let's not pull out our pitchforks yet. Easy boy, don't buck the rider. We're about to flip the script. While all the evidence that I've shown you is absolutely true, there are some studies that actually show NMN being effective, like these. And they use a range of different participants, from pre-diabetic individuals to older individuals to young, physically active individuals. And they also use a wide range of different doses, from 250 milligrams to over a gram a day. For example, this data shows an improved glucose clearance through improved insulin sensitivity in women supplementing with NMN. As we can see, the right side is the NMN group, and when insulin is infused into the bloodstream, they're able to dispose or clear more blood glucose. Or in this study, older individuals in their 70s experienced less drowsiness, so potentially more energy after supplementation. So, why? Do these studies conflict with the previous data? Are they funded by big supplement? Well, three things. One, the funding sources were mostly from NMN companies, but that's also true and does apply to the studies that found no effect. Hear me here. We cannot blame funding for this difference. Two, these studies showed mild results in one or three measures, but no effect in many other measures. And largely, in the measures that we looked in earlier, cholesterol, blood sugar, insulin resistance, and so on, the results here actually substantiate that evidence. I'll explain more on this in just a minute. So before we get to reason number three, let me show you one study that showed much larger positive effects of NMN supplementation. This study showed some pretty profound effect of NMN supplementation. So what's going on here? Well, if you look at the six-minute walking test, which is a test of muscular endurance and tends to correlate with overall better health, if you can walk farther in six minutes, although the participants were deemed largely healthy, their baseline six-minute walking test was Paltry. Normally, healthy would be in the range of 400 to 700 meters, but these individuals started out in the low 300s, sometimes less than that. So while this data does show an improvement and a massive one at that, the participants don't seem to be nearly as healthy as they seemed initially, which instead of ignoring this data, we should use this as a clue to our third reason for the discrepancies. Reason number three. It may still be true that NMN supplementation could be a benefit to certain individuals that are either unhealthy or older, let's say over 60. Now, while there was one study in very old individuals in their 80s that didn't show a benefit, the sample size was small and the measures looked at were largely strength-based, so they didn't look at other biomedical markers. So, while I would strongly argue that we need more than 13 studies on the matter to be certain, here's my current viewpoint. NMN is likely a waste of your money if you are already generally healthy, even if you're in your 40s and possibly even your 50s. 
On the other hand, if you are pre-diabetic or smoke or are overweight and sedentary or have some other widespread ailment, then NMN supplementation might, and I really can't emphasize this enough, might offer some minor benefit. And the same goes for anyone over the age of 60, especially as you get older. But guess what? Dr. Sinclair, you know, the longevity researcher that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the one that got everyone so excited about NMN, he published his own study recently that seems to slightly disagree with the conclusions here. And it was impossible for me to get my hands on this study. It was locked away across every avenue that I usually use to access studies, making it impossible. Or should I say, nearly impossible. Check out the video releasing in two days after this publishes. See you there.